you know? I still remember it to this day. United was about to play against Bayern Munich in the 1999 Champions League final. With a lineup of Beckham, Giggs, Dwight York and Andy Cole, United was looking to bring home the Champions League trophy. The Champions League trophy that's been missing from the club since they last won it in the 60s. However, that Bayern team was no joke and it became apparent rather quickly. A close range free kick by Mario Basler gave Bayern a very early lead in the game. A shell shocked United couldn't find a way back in the game and at one point Bayern even hit the post twice. It really wasn't happening for United and the absences of Roy Keane and Paul Scholes were really felt by the team. In a last roll of dice, the great Sir Alex Ferguson brought on Teddy Sheringham and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. There was a corner kick late in the game and this was gonna be United's last chance of scoring a goal. This was also the first time I ever saw a goalkeeper coming in for a corner as even Peter Schmeichel came in for an all or nothing attempt at a goal. And guess what? United actually equalized. The game was back on and the final was gonna go to the extra time but the gods of football had other plans another corner kick and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer scored the winner it was unbelievable in a matter of three minutes United overturned the game and their fortune even as a young Milan fan I couldn't help but to admire that kind of a comeback where everything seemed lost and there it was Manchester United were the champions of Europe but not only that they even won the Premier League and the FA Cup they were known as the treble winners and that wasn't the last time they would go on to win the Champions League they would go on to three more finals winning it once more in 2008 times were good for United they were determined they were dominant and they were standing on top of the football world through the great Sir Alex Ferguson, Manchester United managed to stay competitive in Europe and domestically, despite the multiple landscape changes in football during his era. This was a club that defined excellence. The standards were different than this club, both on and off the pitch. Honestly, as a Milan fan, there's very few clubs that I consider on our level in terms of history and traditions, and United is certainly one of them. But fast forward to these days, United is a shadow of themselves. It just hasn't been the same club since the retirement of Sir Alex Ferguson. Just like my Milan, United has gone through some rough times. These days, you'd be hard pressed to find United challenging for the title again. And at the time of making this video, United's last ever trophy was the 2017 Europa League that was won by Jose Mourinho. Literally, the last guy I would have imagined at United a decade ago. But the question is, well, what happened? How could a club striving for that level of excellence fall from grace? Well, to do that, we gotta go back, way back to 2009. The date is December 31st, 2009, and Sir Alex Ferguson is spending his birthday on a training pitch. United just beat Wigan Athletic 5-0 to move within two points from Chelsea, who were at the top of the table at the time. United and Ferguson would lose that particular league title to the Chelsea of Carlo Ancelotti, but they won the previous league title and they would win the one after as well. Times were good for Manchester United. They were still dominant, even after selling Cristiano Ronaldo to Real Madrid. Hell, they would even go to another Champions League final in 2011 as well, before losing to Pep Guardiola's brilliant Barcelona team. Winning was the ultimate goal, and second place was an abject failure for United. As he walks in the cold morning of Manchester, he's thinking about how to regenerate the squad and start the next winning cycle. At this point, life was good. Even the great Sir Alex has no idea what's about to come in the next decade. Failure for Manchester United used to be second place, not three years without a trophy. The idea of three seasons out of Champions League is preposterous. Finishing seventh place is unimaginable. For God's sake, we're talking about the might of Manchester United. He doesn't know it yet, but the blue side of Manchester have been making some moves, who he calmly dismissed as their noisy neighbor. I personally think this is a good place to start our storyline. The first signs of Manchester United's demise into the mess that they are today. Losing a player of Cristiano Ronaldo's magnitude is a massive loss for any club. United was gonna show the whole world that they're gonna move on from Cristiano Ronaldo and sign a proper replacement. With the Cristiano Ronaldo money in the bank, this was going to be the summer of all summers. And... Um... Yeah. The, these guys have arrived. We didn't know it then, but this was a sign of things to come. The lack of ambitions that the owners of Manchester United would have. Despite these things going on in the background, United would still win the 2011 and the 2013 league titles with pretty much the leftover of the double winning team of 2008, while narrowly missing out the 2012 league title to Manchester City when this moment happened. Aguero! That 
That was one of the worst days of United's history. The so-called noisy neighbors took over United as the Premier League champions. You could really tell that it stung hard for the club, for the players, for the fans, and most importantly, Sir Alex Ferguson himself. He wasn't gonna let this slide, so he looked up in the market and seized an opportunity to sign Robin Van Persie from Arsenal. For those of you who don't remember, Van Persie was one of the elite footballers of the early 2010s, and his arrival certainly added a massive firepower to Manchester United. By the way, it's also in this summer that United lost Paul Pogba to Juventus on free transfer. Just for the record. Anyway, with 26 league goals in 38 games, Van Persie fired Manchester United to the 2013 Premier League title. Just like Ronaldo had done in 2007. Just like Eric Cantona had done in 94. United managed to get the Premier League back from the blue side of Manchester. But there was a massive news brewing behind the scenes. A news that would rock the English football and the rest of the football world in its entirety. The great Sir Alex Ferguson announced his retirement when United secured the Premier League title. This was truly the end of an era for Manchester United and English football in general. With the Premier League already won, Ferguson was preparing for his last ever game against West Bromwich Albion as he looked back to his 26 years at United, an institution that he helped to relaunch back to the top of the football world. But the truth is that the signs were there, even as he lifted the Premier League for the 13th time in 2013. Manchester City were spending unseen amount of money to revolutionize what it meant to run a football club. I don't know if United massively underestimated this new rivalry or overestimated their capacity to carry on challenging for the titles. And I think there's an element of both. United won the 2013 title with an aging squad that had to be renewed. I think United severely underestimated Ferguson's power to turn decent teams into winners. And it's easy to see the absence of the Ferguson effect. After all, Fergie time was a real thing. That being said, there's more than one reason for United's downfall, and Ferguson's retirement is just one of them. And before we talk about the rest of United's problems, don't forget to leave a like or comment. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm, as a lot of time goes into making these videos. I really enjoy reading your comments. Thank you for your love and support. If there's one way to describe the era between 2009 until today, it's anti-glazer protests, misjudged managers, and massive transfer failures. Succeeding Sir Alex Ferguson was never gonna be an easy job for anyone, especially when the legend himself handpicks you. David Moyes was the first manager appointed at United after Ferguson retired. David Moyes was simply the chosen one. For the younger folks that don't recall the 2000s, David Moyes was a hot name in the English football. Despite having an average squad, he pushed Everton to consistent top 8 finishes for years and years, kinda like what he's doing right now at West Ham. Honestly, on paper, it really made sense. Just like his predecessor, he was a team builder who managed to keep Everton in a very respectable position for 11 years. And he had a good start. Moyes started the season by winning the Community Shield and an opening day win to start off the new era. Not a bad start by the chosen one. That being said, this was the only success Moyes would have with Manchester United. In his first six league games, David Moyes lost three of them, including defeats against Liverpool and Manchester City. It also didn't help that they were knocked out out of the FA Cup in their first match against Swansea, a team that won the league the previous season wasn't even close to even qualify for Champions League now. After a run of mixed results, David Moyes was sacked and replaced by club legend Ryan Giggs, who came in as a player manager. For the younger viewers out there, a player manager used to be a thing back in the day. Like, way back in the day. Like, decades ago. Where you were both a manager and a player. And yes, that actually meant that you often substitute yourself in the middle of the match. Anyway, the damage was already done, and United had to get back to the drawing board to find another replacement. United looked east and west, and came up with Louis Van Hall. Just like David Moyes, on paper, this appointment made sense as well. Van Hall just guided Netherlands to the third place in the 2014 World Cup, and he also knew how to work with the star striker Robin van Persie. They also signed Angel de Maria from Real Madrid, who was fresh off winning the Champions League and going all the way to the World Cup final with Argentina. This wasn't just another signing. This was a statement signing by the club that, hey, we're not messing around anymore. This was supposed to be the end of United's transitional era. The transfer broke the record for the highest fee ever paid by a British club at the time. A lot of things were expected from Angel Di Maria. He was given the iconic number 7 of Manchester United. And he had a brilliant start. Two goals and two assists in his first four games earned him the Player of the Month award for September that season. But if you're watching this in 2022, you already know how the story ends. 
he was nothing but a disappointment and started to dislike the fans, the atmosphere and the club in general. And I think that particular transfer is a good representation of what's been going on at United in the past decade. Despite these challenges, Van Hall managed to get United to finish 4th and qualify for the Champions League. I mean, don't get me wrong, it wasn't great by any means, but it was still 3 places higher than his predecessor. Despite a busy summer that saw him bring in the likes of Memphis Depay, Anthony Martial and Bastian Schweinsteiger, he didn't have the best of starts. For the record, Depay and Martial were considered two of the best young players of that era. I personally thought that was going to be United's forward line for the next 5 years. Kinda like the next Rooney and Ronaldo when they were young. <sighs> How wrong I was. Hell, there's even a clause in Anthony Martial's contract that United had to pay a certain fee to Monaco if he wins the Ballon d'Or award. Such was his promise back in the day. Well, needless to say that there's a bigger chance of United winning the league this season than Martial winning the Ballon d'Or award. Anyway, Van Hall didn't have the best of starts and he was knocked out of the Champions League group stage and finished 5th in the league to only qualify for the Europa League. Literally behind their noisy neighbors on goal difference. He did win the FA Cup though, but he was sacked right after winning the final against Crystal Palace. A final that United won in extra time. I gotta say, this was also the season that many youngsters were promoted to the first team, including Marcus Rashford and Jesse Lingard. United looked east and west to look for a replacement, someone that can carry the legacy of the great Sir Alex Ferguson. Ah oh, shit, here we go again. Someone that can represent the ethos and the philosophy of Manchester United. The answer? <coughs> Literally the last guy you would expect at Manchester United. The special one, Jose Mourinho. That being said, his first year was a success. Well, at least by current United standards. In his first season, he won the Community Shield, the League Cup and the Europa League, which qualified them for the Champions League once again. In his second season, Mourinho did not win any trophies, but got United to second place only behind a record-breaking Manchester City. I also have to add the fact that it wasn't even a close title challenge, as City ran out with 19 points above them. Also, this is the season that they broke the world record when they spent 105 million euros to sign Paul Pogba from Juventus. By the way, this is the same Paul Pogba that they let go on free transfer and at the time of making this video are about to lose on free transfer again. I swear that's like the most united thing to do. I guess the only winner in this transfer was Mino Raiola. But all in all, things weren't bad, at least from outside looking in. With the support of the United board, Mourinho was gonna add a couple of defenders that he asked for. And yeah, that didn't happen. And you could tell Mourinho wasn't happy and he didn't even hide it in public. And that was the beginning of a very toxic atmosphere that would stay for the rest of his days at Manchester United. At this point, even neutrals like me could see the unhealthy environment at United. The football was poor, the results were poor, the atmosphere was toxic, and United was really far from winning any silverware. And after just winning 7 games out of his first 17 league games, United decided it was enough for José Mourinho. Unlike the previous times, they no longer looked east and west to sign a replacement. They looked for a solution closer to home. Home, and they found it in their former player and legend Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, the same Ole that scored the winning goal in the Champions League final that we talked about earlier. This was supposed to be a temporary solution until they find a manager in summer. Ole's appointment had a certain romanticism and positivity around it, a certain positivity that was certainly welcomed by the United fans. Such was a toxic environment under his predecessor. It was time for Ole to shine, and shine he did. 10 wins in 13 matches, which also included the epic comeback against PSG kinda tied United's hand into making him permanent. Legend has it that from this point, Oli was seen at the wheel. But that initial optimism was soon replaced by a series of near misses and mixed results. If I was to summarize Oli's time at United, I'd say it was full of false hopes and massive gaps between United and their rivals City and Liverpool. And to make things worse, a severely neglected Old Trafford, once the envy of the world, is now just a shadow of his former self. There are clear images of leaky roofs and iron and rusts around the stadium and the aging Old Trafford is in a desperate need for modernization. Honestly, I don't know what are the owner's plans to renovate the Old Trafford, but they did buy a fridge though. A very expensive one by the way. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist a lame joke.
Anyway, despite some hopeful moments, United was never close to even a title challenge. Even in Ali's last full season, when United finished second, they were 12 points behind Manchester City. I don't know if you heard the saying, but I really like it. A struggling salesman doesn't show up with a bicycle. He buys a newer and shinier car. And that's exactly what United did. Again, they brought Jadon Sancho, Rafael Varane, and the one and only Cristiano Ronaldo. Some may say, give me these three players and eight pieces of sticks and I'll win you the Champions League. <sighs> if only football was that simple. And perhaps that kind of mentality is one of the many reasons for United's downfall. Just signing players without any consideration of how they're gonna fit in or even if their signing is necessary in the first place. Sometimes it just seems like they're putting square pegs in round holes. There are so many questionable decisions by the club on the transfer market. We already talked about the De Maria transfer in this video. And to this day, I have no idea why United signed Donny van de Beek just to barely play him while paying 80 million pounds for Harry Maguire. Honestly, it's easy to criticize this one with the benefit of hindsight. But I'll be honest with you, while he's been pretty good for England, at no point have I seen him worthy of that kind of investment. And to make things worse, he was made the club captain only 6 months after arrival, which is puzzling on its own. But the one arrival that really boggles my mind was the appointment of Ralf Ragnick. Honestly, this has to be one of the worst mismatches in football history. United's squad is the furthest thing away from the type of football that Ralf Ragnick plays. It just seems like there's zero due diligence being done when it comes to transfers and appointing managers. When you look at the likes of City or Liverpool, you can see that there's actually a method to the madness, something we haven't seen at United for a whole decade. You can even look at the profiles of the United managers that came after Sir Alex Ferguson. The chosen one, followed by a possession-based coach, followed by a pragmatic coach, followed by the company man, followed by the great-grandfather of Gegen Press. Can you see a pattern in their profile? Me neither. It seems like there's no defined philosophy at the club. And while the club has done fantastically well commercially, there's a clear incompetence when it comes to running the football side of things. There was a time that United fans mocked Liverpool fans about only reliving history. And it seems like at this rate, the tables have turned. It's gonna be a crucial summer for United to get their house back in order. And it seems like at the time of making this video, Eric Ten Hag is the leading man to take over as United's manager. And believe me, there's very few clubs in the world that have the history and the heritage of Manchester United. But there's only so long that you can live off your name and heritage. And trust me, I can say this because I've seen this mess and worse at my own club at Milan. There's gonna be a time that your name and history alone will no longer be enough. It'll be interesting to see how Manchester United recovers. But one thing's for sure, with the standards set by Manchester City and Liverpool, it's gonna be a very hard road to recovery back to the top.